Hey everybody, welcome back to Matthew Kelly Pottery on YouTube. I hope you are doing well. This morning, I not only have morning voice, as you can probably hear, but we're also getting ready to unload uh, another gas kiln. This one is not quite as full as I would like it to be because I didn't have some of the smaller things that I like to fill in around all the platter bowls and everything else. Uh, but uh, there's a couple cool tests in here. There's some face mugs. There's a refire from my wood kiln. Uh, there's a few different things I haven't peeked other than in these little bitty holes, but it's plenty cool now because I was going to unload it last night, but it was just a touch too hot, so I opened the damper and uh, opened these portholes. And uh, uh, But first, I'm going to finish my last couple sips of coffee, and uh, as you can tell, it's a brisk morning here in North Carolina, so it's going to get nice and uh, warm today, but uh, morning is pretty cool, but I love this weather. And uh, anyway, but we're here to unload a kiln, so let's go. All right, everybody, future Matthew here talking uh, uh, to you about past Matthew and what you're about to see. So as always, I have really high expectations when I go to unload a kiln, any kind of kiln. I think that's for all of us. We all think, okay, hey, this, this is going to be amazing. This is great. I got new things I'm testing and trying and expectations are high. And sometimes you open the kiln and woo, total difference. Well, Ambulance driving by. Or police car, fire truck, something. Anyway, so a lot of times or sometimes in pottery, that's going to happen where it totally changes what you were expecting or totally changes your attitude. And so you won't see a bunch of it because I'm going to cut some of that out. But I took some time and just walked away from the camera and I thought, I'm not even going to finish recording this video. This stuff looks so bad. Uh, but I did finish, but I wanted to explain... What you're about to see is just some expectations that I had just kind of totally get dashed and uh, it was not fun, uh, but I did realize and figure out where the problem came from. It was after I finished recording and uh, I did figure out what happened and basically what happens is you'll see the, the piece that I tried to refire from my wood kiln affected the glazes in the very top and bottom of the kiln by the excess salt that was kind of on that pot that ended up coming off during as being while being reheated came off and affected basically the top layer of the kiln and then probably because of the draft of the kiln went down and affected the bottom layer of the kiln so uh, most of the pots in the kiln uh, that are normally red or, or I say a lot of the pots in the kiln that are normally red turned out not quite so red and so I was pretty upset about that. I mean there are still people that like that color and they're fine as far as just in general being functional pottery but they just don't look like what I was expecting. So, uh, And the problem with the red is that you cannot refire it. I know that's going to be a lot of questions. I've had that questions before. question before. That red is kind of like a one-time fire deal. If it doesn't turn out right the first time, then it's just done, and it is what it is. So it's no use me trying to refire it. Even if you put more glaze on it, it just doesn't work. So uh, you're getting ready to see, like I said, me being pretty upset uh, and down in the dumps about what I'm seeing. But it is what it is. That's pottery. I kind of go through that at the end of the video as well. By that time, my attitude has kind of gotten corrected. I've had time to work on it. It is what it is. So anyway, I just wanted to uh, take a second and talk about past me now a few days ahead of time and uh, put this in here so you'll know what you're about to see. Anyway, see you guys later. All right, here we go. Uh, hopefully I don't do this too fast because I've got to uh, reset up my tables for my uh, uh, sale this weekend. Uh, it's, uh, I, I set up outside uh, for a lot of my kiln opening sales and uh, during the night I have to bring all the pots in because all of the dew will ruin all the price stickers and uh, also just get all the pots wet. So we bring them all inside and then the next morning I have to set them all back up before everybody gets here. So it's, uh, I've got about an hour and a half before uh, we technically open today. So I need to unload this and then set all the pots out and then I'll come back and start uh, sanding the bottoms of these so that they'll be uh, for sale actually today and then tomorrow as well. And then 
whatever doesn't sell uh, between my kiln opening sale this weekend. Uh, I mean, today and tomorrow, I am doing an Etsy sale, and I will pick out some things that will go on there. So uh, look forward to that. I don't have a date yet for you, but uh, we're working on that. I'm still working on some logistics of packing materials and things like that. There's some things that I don't have that I can't get access to anymore, so I'm going to have to rearrange and change some of the way that I'm packing uh, for my Etsy sales. So anyway, I've got to figure out some logistics. But either way, let's open this up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, don't like that red. <laughs> oh, that didn't work. <laughs> Maybe we won't put this on YouTube. Oh, jeez. All right, well, I don't know what's up with that red, but it does not look good at all. None of it. Oh. Uh, Alrighty, well, anybody want any shrimp colored pots? I got them. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that at all. Oh, jeez. All right, I had to take a minute or two here to work on my attitude because a lot of this already looks like crap to me. So I'm gonna load it, unload it anyways because this is part of pottery, And uh, but I don't think I've ever had a load of red that looked this bad. So uh, yeah, and I don't know really at all what I did different other than, um, yeah, I really don't know. So it is what it is. Uh, so I have a lot of uh, have a lot of pink pottery. So <laughs> it's supposed to be red, and uh, yeah, it's just not. So uh, I really don't know what the deal is with this, but we're gonna unload it anyways and uh, show you some of it. So yeah, because I got my temperature right. Other things look fine. Um, I guess I forgot to clean that one off. That stinks. Um, that looks pretty good. That's the uh, that rutile blue when I spray it on. I did the turtle design there. I think I must have been in a hurry and forgot to clean off the bottom. So, but that'll clean up um, decent. So, so if you hear a bunch of crashing in the background, it's me throwing stuff in the trash can. <laughs> oh, all this red looks like crap. Oh, Jesus. Yep. Here's a plate I did carving on. Uh, I did a uh, red slip in there and then carved through it and then I sprayed the rutile blue on top of that so you got this nice coppery color and then down in the carving is where the rutile blue uh, I think that's another one that I forgot to wipe off the bottom, but it didn't really get as bad as that other one. But. Not the best way to start out the morning, that's for sure. <laughs> oh. Another turtle uh, bowl there, and another one of these cups. You might have seen one of these from before. I'm going to do some more carving on some cups I made uh, yesterday as well, so we'll be doing more of that in different designs. Nice mugs with the rutil blue and the red slip. It's a little 
cup that uh, me and uh, my littlest one made together, and I uh, attempted to make it red, but now it's a pink cup. <laughs> All right, here was my test of the uh, the blue and white that I did in my uh, wood kiln this last time. This is what the white looks like uh, in my gas kiln on on my gas fired clay. So you get a little bit more of an orangey kind of, uh, and some iron spots that come out of the clay, but the uh, but the blue ash still looks really cool on top of that. So uh, that's definitely something I'll I can be working with for sure. I like that. Has a little bit more of an earthy look than the white. This one had black slip on it, and then I sprayed the rutile on the outside. And that's the carving that I'd done on those. It was one from my first wood firing that this rutile did not turn out the right color. So I decided to refire it and now it's uh it definitely turned blue, but it blistered all over the glaze, so I definitely like it better than I did, but uh, except for the blisters. <laughs> Oh yeah, I will. Maybe this will make up for that shelf. That looks pretty good. The blue peacock platter bowl. Doing some uh, Seagrove ornaments. I decided to do a couple of these where I left the clay raw here and I just put glaze down in the words there. Uh, and then I have some also that I did glass on. I think I put a little bit too much glass on there, but uh, <laughs> I wanted to make sure the whole thing was covered. And I'm like, well, yeah, I did a bit, bit much. Dinner plates for an order that are supposed to be red that are now pink. They actually turn, they didn't get it oxidized. Because there's solid color in the bottom, but, uh, but not red. So. These are the uh, angel ornaments I made for our local hospice from 2018 and I remade a couple because I have a couple friends that uh, uh, had gotten them in 2018 and their, their ornaments uh, somehow got broken so I wanted to remake them for them because uh, they were for family members or friends that had been taken care of at hospice in 2018 so I got those remade uh, for those people. All right, let's see what other kind of damage is done down in here. Wow, okay. I got something that's red, that's good. That is wild. I was really concerned because I had several things in here that were red and after seeing that top shelf I thought there's no way anything in there is going to look good. Wow that is really cool. I know what I did and I definitely will do that again. And uh, that is just, that is funky. Ooh. What I love is the uh, is the uh, kind of second line in there where I had put some of that glaze on the bottom and then I skipped down and did a line of it again to give it more uh, more character and definitely can see that that's cool there's a 
red peacock fighter ball that actually turned red well a little bit more red here a little bit more pink there but that looks pretty good looks pretty good some salad plates with the rutile blue and red slip I made these for my wood kiln and they uh, didn't get in there so I sprayed ash glaze on the outside and uh, to finish them off in my gas kiln did too much glass on these ornaments. <laughs> All right. So here's my first full on blue peacock powder bowl with the with those uh, gold colored dots. That's pretty cool. I I actually don't like the red the way the glass turned red in that because there's no red anywhere else. So I may either have to glaze the whole thing in blue in the bottom or do some dark blue glass next time. But. And just for you guys, I did another one of these. <laughs> Because I had some people saying they wanted to buy that other one and I thought, well, I'm not going to sell it, so I'm going to do another one. And so this one, if it doesn't sell here at uh, my kiln opening, I will put this one on Etsy because I had several people say they would love to have one of these funky ones. So there it is. Peacock platter bowl that definitely came out. Should have done this a little bit more ash glaze, I think, but but it looks good. So here's one. I actually like that. I wasn't sure if I was gonna like this, so I I did the black slip. I carved through it, and then I left the outside completely raw. I didn't put any glaze on this and I thought it would be rough but it's actually smooth and then I did a red on the inside I really like that like it's got more of a natural feel on the outside but it like I said but it's got like a slight sheen to it and it's uh, almost like that slip made it give it a finish and it definitely shows off the uh, carving so I think I'm on to something there that's cool. That's pretty. Look at the way that goes from uh, purple and then even gets a little bit of reddish burgundy on that side. Found a couple social distancing mugs that I hadn't fired yet, so those were in there. the purple with that other color on top that turned out nice that see the red how uh, pinky shrimp colored it is yeah I don't know why I gotta work on that I think maybe I just need to work on my reduction in the kiln in general because I can already see the ones on the bottom are not didn't get good reduction but they should have all right, so here's two more of the carved pieces. This one, I sprayed the ash glaze on the outside, which that's definitely way too kind of dark and brown. And then this one I dipped in the rutile blue. So that's the rutile blue, and this is the rutile blue over the black slip. 
on the outside and I think these middle of that did not have any slip on it so I was worried that one might run off but that's pretty cool I totally forgot I had done these. I had some platter bowls already in there glazed and already ash glaze sprayed on them and everything. And I thought, well, I, I don't even know what these are glazed, if they're red or blue or... <laughs> so they're, they're yes, they're, they're red and blue. So some red and blue peacock platter bowls. And I've got two of them. <laughs> So those are pretty cool. I'd forgot that I had done them, but this, if you remember, if you watched my last video about glazing, this is the one that I dropped, and I decided to uh, go ahead and just spray rutile blue on this side and then some of the purple on this side just to see what it would look like because I figured I wasn't going to be selling this anyway and uh, yeah <laughs> I got a bunch of uh, my uh, two youngest ones little critters that they've made I'm just going to bring the camera in here and show them to you they're not glazed but what we're doing is I just fire them to glaze temperature and then they'll take them inside and, uh, and paint them. So we got a little, little dog there that Jocelyn made, a little person, a little, uh, I think that's a pig, oops sorry, there's a pig, she's got a lion here, there's a turtle. So we'll just take these in and paint them and then, or they'll paint them and then uh, spray a clear coat on them. My youngest, he's making these little blob guys with feet. I think they started out to be like Kirby from a video game, but now they're just kind of, I don't know what they are. <laughs> I think this one, this one here was a birthday cake, but I think the candle that was in the middle fell off. And uh, yeah, oh yeah, here's a, Here's a bear that my daughter made as well. All right, we'll get the ugly out of the way. Well, that's not, it doesn't even look melted. I guess maybe I didn't fire that hot enough. I might try to refire that one. Good lord. Ooh. I wonder if, uh, yeah. I wonder if how cold it was affected this. Yeah, these definitely don't look melted. Like it's not hot enough. Yep. It's a shame too, because that's uh, one of the ones I made when I was doing the uh, challenge of making the pasta that y'all designed on the app. And I was really hoping that one was going to be red and black, but it's not. I did some cereal bowls in this uh, blue and gold peacock. I think even these would have looked a little better if they were hotter. But uh, that blue does okay. So the face mugs are probably actually better not being as hot because the uh, the red iron oxide doesn't look quite as uh, metallic uh, when it doesn't get quite as hot. So there's Sammy. There's Hubert. I think Sammy, I think, honestly, I, I, I mean, I know it's not 
exact, but I was thinking maybe it's the mustache or what, but I was thinking Sammy Davis Jr. probably when I, when I made that one. Um, and maybe he didn't even have a mustache like that. I don't remember now, but <laughs> that's just what came to mind. <laughs> All right, here's one of the ones named Chuckles. I think I got a couple. A couple of them are spoken for. Here's Calvin. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the Chuckles that's spoken for here. And then here's Jed. Here's Fu Manchu, and here's Wilbur. I don't know, I guess I like the Fu Manchu mustache. I do that a lot. <laughs> These with uh, with multiple, with actually like almost a full set of teeth are growing. I mean, not a full set, but, and he's got big teeth, but uh, that's Willie, and here's Elmer. And, uh, and that's it. So, uh, so yeah, I'd say that, uh, there was some good things out of it, but, uh, there's a, a, a large portion of that firing that, uh, I was definitely not happy with. And, uh, yeah, not sure, uh, what the deal is there, um, uh, other than just not getting good reduction throughout the whole kiln. I think I need to go ahead and purchase that ceramic coating. Uh, and spray the inside of the kiln. Um, uh, there's a couple of repairs I need to do first before I do that, but because uh, I think that would help me get more even reduction throughout the whole kiln. Um, either that or I'd have to line the whole thing with some fiber or something. I, I'm not sure yet. We're going to figure that out, but uh, either way, it is what it is. And uh, I figured I, you know, I, 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 was, I was really this close to just saying, you know what, I'm just not going to make a video of this unloading because it was it was that bad when I first opened it. <laughs> I thought, you know, um, this is part of pottery. So if, if, you, uh, uh, if you already do it, you've already experienced this yourself. Um, and if you haven't experienced it yet, you will. Um, and if you're gonna get into pottery, uh, this will be just, just so you know that uh, eventually and, and probably more often when you start than later on, uh, you're going to open a kiln at some point and be like, you know what, this really stinks. This is a bunch of junk. And, um, and it very well may be a bunch of junk, or it may be just something you don't like that somebody else will. And you just have to uh, kind of realize that, you know, just like life, it's, it's, uh, it, we don't always get what we want. And... Uh, uh, I'm not going to quote the rest of the lyrics because I wasn't thinking of the song when I said that. But uh, you don't always get what you want. You don't, uh, things don't always turn out just rosy and peachy, which everybody knows. But you just have, you know, at least I do. I have high expectations when I, uh, when I fire a kiln, unload a kiln. And uh, you know what, uh, at least this was just a, a bad load in the gas kiln. If I have a bad load in the wood kiln, I might be a bit more uh, <laughs> upset because... That'd be a lot more pots, but uh, anyway, all I have to do is uh, just try it again. And uh, the bad thing about that red is you can't refire it and get a darker red. I know several people commented on that before. Uh, if you refire that red, it will not get better. Uh, so there's just no use in trying that. Uh, I've known potters work with the copper red before, and that just doesn't work. Um, I'm trying to lean to get out of the sun, but it's not working. So. Um, but basically, uh, I just wanted to keep recording because I uh, um, just, you know, this, this, is, this is a life lesson for me and for all of us that, you know what, sometimes just it, it stinks and you just have to change your attitude a little bit and move on and learn from it the best you can. So uh, I did get some good things out of this kiln, not to say the whole thing was bad, uh, but there was a good portion that was just not good and uh, it just is what it is and we'll move on. So I wanted to show it to you anyway. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for all my patrons. Uh, I've talked to a few of them lately and just uh, wanted to express my gratitude to all of you um, because uh, I still feel weird about having a Patreon page because 
I still feel like, you know what, you're not buying a piece of pottery and giving me money in exchange for that, and that's what I'm used to. And so having patrons, I really appreciate you, but it does still feel strange to me to have a Patreon. Uh, even though you are getting value in the content that I put on YouTube, I understand that. But uh, And as one of them said to me recently, he said, well, you know, you're not forcing us, any of us, to give you money. And I'm like, I know that, but it just feels strange to me. So thank you to you all uh, who are patrons. And if you care to check out my Patreon, uh, there are some rewards listed there uh, for those who are patrons um, between uh, things where they get shipped to Pottery uh, randomly or on a, a monthly, I mean a quarterly basis or, or uh, biannually. And then there are uh, uh, early access to Etsy restocks and things like that. So you can check that if you want to. Link will be in the description. Uh, but that's all I'm going to say about that. And uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for all your support, your comments. And uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty on this unloading video because of all that happened. So anyway, see you guys in the next video. All right, bye.